Hello my dear church boys and welcome back to yet another episode of Saint Robert's Day Game and Dating Podcast. And in this episode we're going to be looking at the question, has day game become harder over the last years? Because there are a lot of guys claiming that day game has become much harder, even guys that used to get good results but now can't seem to get any dates. But I also know a bunch of guys who used to do good years ago and now are doing even better. So who is right? Actually both sides are correct. For many guys, day game has become harder. Girls aren't as responsive as they used to be. But still, there are a lot of guys for whom it's just as easy as it used to be. And it's not about their age, looks coming from a better country or anything like that. So let's look at why that's the case and what you can do to be one of the guys who's doing good in day game. We will look at five questions. First, why does it seem like day game has become much harder, even though the real differences are really small? Second question, what COVID had to do with day game becoming harder? And no, it's not about people becoming less social. Third, how the popularity of day game has made it harder. Number four, what's up with people saying that the most popular day game cities like Prague, Warsaw, London and other places are overgamed, while at the same time we hear very good day gamers saying that these cities are totally fine, the day game still, there is still great and all the conversations about them being overgamed are complete, complete nonsense. Actually, both sides are correct. And lastly, why you can't really trust opinions about day game you hear online and how to find, find great day gamers to hang out with. This podcast episode is a little bit more philosophical, but if you're going out and you aren't doing too great in day game, maybe even you used to do great, but now aren't and want to understand why that's the case and whether day game still works, then well, everything will make sense by the end of this episode. First, let's look at why does it seem that day game has become much harder. There are two reasons for this. I've been coaching for more than half a decade and my first encounters with day game were almost 10 years ago. So I was thinking about this podcast episode and I was thinking what has changed over the years? Why all of a sudden we hear so many more guys talking about their negative experiences and how day game doesn't really work for them, how it's so hard, how they're struggling, etc. And I came up with two reasons. Uh, let's call one of them weirdos. And the other reason is people underestimating how much work it takes to get good at day game because of things they see and hear online. And let's start by talking about the weirdos. Well, day game attracts very different types of people. Yes, there are a bunch of you know, successful, cool dudes who see this idea of overcoming their fears and being able to chat with any girl in any situation as like a cool next challenge to have in life and that's how they start day gaming you have a bunch of you know, average dudes but then you also have a lot of weirdos incels and similar people i thought well maybe we hear more of these opinions because now we have more weirdos day gaming but this didn't really make sense because back when i started i also met some weirdos and they were doing terribly in day game and i couldn't figure this out but then it clicked there have always been weirdos day gaming and there have always been really cool successful dudes day gaming. Actually, I think that now over the last years more and more kind of normal cool successful people are starting to day game. But what these people aren't doing, they aren't wasting their time talking about day game online in, in places where most of the people they would be interacting with are well, either average day gamers or, or like really weird dudes. If you look at good day gamers and if you look at successful dudes day gaming, then well, most of them are doing interesting things in their life. They're out running their businesses, hanging out with girls, day gaming, you know, working out and doing similar stuff. They aren't spending their time in YouTube comment sections or posting about day game on X. They simply have a lot of better things to do in their lives. While the guys who have not a lot of things going on in their lives, they're not doing great with women, maybe they are getting bitter towards women while well, they're looking for people to blame. And you hear them blaming women, you hear them blaming feminism and other things. And 
if you're talking about things like that online, it's very easy to pretty fast, to pretty soon find other people who agree with you. If you look at the, the average day game video on YouTube, look at the comment section and you will quickly realize that people in the comment section, there aren't the good day gamers, there aren't the successful guys that are learning day game. It's mostly losers who have nothing going on in their life posting in a comment section. The same goes on about you know, most mediums online where people talk about day game. Most of the people kind of taking part in the average comment section, in the average manosphere, well, they have really nothing going on in their lives. And this is why we hear more negativity about day game and about women. The successful guys have better things to do in their lives, so they're not posting about that, while the unsuccess unsuccessful guys and incels and guys like that, well, they're online hating all the time. So that's why we hear more and more stuff like that. So reason number one why we hear negativity online about kind of, kind of how day game isn't really working anymore is because successful guys and guys who are doing good in day game aren't wasting their time talking about day game in YouTube comment sections on X and, and other places. They're out living their lives. And because how cool they are and that they're getting results uh, in day game, they get access to group chats and communities that the average day gamer can't even get in. For example, when someone is joining our private community, I jump on a call with every single guy to make sure they're cool dudes and to filter out the red pill guys. Plus, there is a paywall, which, you know, filters for people who are really dedicated and really want to learn stuff. So they're not joining our community just because it's another community, another chat, another whatever. Yeah, which means that the most guys in the community are really cool dudes who are taking action. And the second reason why we hear more about how day game doesn't work online these days is because people underestimate how much work it takes to become good at day game. That's because a lot of the success stories we hear are kind of overnight success stories. Someone who is good looking and has great social skills, you know, they tried day game, it worked great. Oh my God, this is amazing. So people hear these stories and they think, okay, day game will work really, really fast. And they don't really understand that it's not like that for most people. If you want to get good at day game, be ready to have it as one of your main priorities for at least six months. If you want to get fit, you're not going to, work out here and there and you know eat healthy when you have time you will have to be dedicated and well many guys arrive in day game with attitude like that they try it for you know one two three months half-heartedly and then they're surprised they're not getting any results if instead they would have spent these two to three months obsessing about day game there's a good chance they would be starting to get some dates so what's the reality is day game harder now than it used to be or not Still, taking all of this into account, it's actually true. Day game has become harder, but not for everyone, for beginners. The level needed to start getting results is higher. The price of entry is higher, so to say, and there are two reasons for that. COVID and more guys day gaming. And this is where things will finally start to make sense. How COVID made day game harder? Back in the day, if you were not a complete loser and you came from a fairly developed country like USA, UK, maybe some places in the Western Europe, places like Australia, and you went to locations like maybe Warsaw, Prague, Kiev, etc., you were actually considered high value. Oh my God, I can go out with a foreigner. That's so exciting. But then... COVID happened. COVID didn't mean there were less people traveling. It meant all of a sudden a lot of people became digital nomads. And what did they do? They started traveling to cheap places with nice lifestyle and hot girls. All of a sudden, being a foreigner wasn't such a big deal anymore in these places. Plus, a lot of digital nomads also are day gamers. And on top of that, a lot of former Soviet Union countries saw very rapid development and not a lot of guys not only became more successful, that happened earlier, but now they were more self-conscious and they had a lot of uh, kind of stuff to, I don't know, a lot of personal growth stuff, self-development stuff. You add these two things up and everything has changed. All of a sudden, being a foreigner, even from a wealthy country, doesn't mean much. And there are a lot of really cool local guys who are not leaving in a week. 
This is true for many places in Latin America, for example, Colombia and Argentina. Yes, uh, while it's not really true that there are now many more local guys who are doing better, although that's also a case in maybe Buenos Aires, where a lot of people are starting to work online for, for American companies and working in programming and, and, and jobs like that. But these places are used to gringos being there and hitting on hot girls. And the second reason day game has become harder now is day game is more popular. Most hot girls have been opened a bunch of times before. It's nothing special anymore and they don't care. So if all you know is how to stop a girl and start a conversation, but you aren't really bringing any value to the table, it's kind of boring for them. We looked at two reasons why day game has become harder, but I'll make a counter argument. I'll say day game actually hasn't become harder. It just stopped working for guys who were relying on being the shiny thing. Now you actually need to learn how to talk to girls and have interesting conversations. The price of entry has become harder. So you either have to be a good looking guy with good social skills, or you have to do a lot of work to become a good day gamer. And now let's look at the question about uh, are some cities becoming overgamed or is that all a lie? Pick any popular day game city, Prague, Warsaw, Budapest, London, and you'll find a lot of guys saying that these cities are overrun by day gamers and day game there doesn't work. At the same time, you will hear a lot of high level, very good day gamers saying that that's bullshit and these cities are still very good for day game. And on top of that, you have a bunch of other dudes who just want to fit in with the better day gamers and kind of be part of the club claiming that oh yeah that's bullshit day game still works there even though they've never gotten laid in these cities and you also have to take into account the false positives for example warsaw is the perfect example of false positives it's a city where a lot of girls will be very receptive when you stop them they'll have great conversations with you they'll give you their numbers but most of them will never come out on a date with you and the ones who do a lot of those dates will be dates to nowhere and it's going to be pretty hard to convert them to lays unless you meet the right girl or you really know what you're doing another place just like this was kiev before the war we heard so many stories of guys going there and saying, oh my God, it's the best day game city in the world. It's so easy. I had dates with, with the hottest girls I've seen in my life. Well, what these guys were not telling you is while they were having these dates, paying for all the stuff, they were not sleeping with these girls. So you have to be very careful when you kind of hear opinions uh, other guys have about certain day game cities. So who the hell can you trust? Well, actually both the guys who say that the city, these cities are over gamed and the guys that say that these cities are amazing for day game, they're both correct. I was just coaching a student in Warsaw and we day gamed in different parts of the city. We day gamed in the areas where all the day gamers go, but we also day gamed on a lot of other streets where we saw no one else approaching. The student was getting many rejections and had many short conversations in the areas where everyone else was approaching, but he had mostly very nice uh, you know, reactions and fairly receptive girls in all the other streets we went to. So yes, if you are a beginner day gamer who isn't that smooth yet, then well, the reactions you'll get in these popular streets, popular areas and parks and shopping malls, etc., will be pretty bad. Yet, how come there are many high-level guys saying, no, 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 these cities are great and these locations are great? Well, their skill level is much higher and their opens aren't as transparent and awkward. They're perceived as cool guys saying hi to a girl. Yes, they'll still get more rejections in these areas, but well, they'll still do much better than the average day gamer. This is what I mean when I say the price of entry is higher now, especially when you're going to these busy over gamed locations. It all comes down to the herd mentality. Yes, there are many guys who are trying to think uh, on their own, look for what works, look for what doesn't, and they're oftentimes going against the grain. 
This was the whole idea of day game, right? Kind of we say no today, kind of typical ways of dating. We say no to getting shit faced in clubs and bars, and we say no to online dating and, and simping and and we're we're trying this wild thing of going out and approaching girls. It was sort of this renegade idea. But even within the day game community, most guys are still doing the same stuff everyone else is doing. They're trying to blend in, they're going to the same locations, they're dressed the same, they're using the same open openers, the same lines, the same fake stories. But most of these guys aren't really listening to this podcast episode. I know that in my audience, the people are fairly kind of, they're the type of guys who think for themselves. So if you're like that, you should actually have no problems with getting decent at day game, as long as you're doing the right things. So if you can't really trust a lot of the opinions you hear online, how can you connect with great day gamers? Well, now you understand that a lot of people kind of talking the negative stuff online are just red pill losers, incels, and similar people, and you shouldn't listen to them. Also, be a little careful when you hear about guys who started doing good very fast. Usually these guys are good looking, or maybe they have great social skills, or both. So, yes, while they could be doing great, day game for them is easier. In many cases, they'll be great guys to hang out with, but understand that they had a different style starting point and what worked for them doesn't really apply to the average day gamer. Look for guys who are doing good in day game but who had to put in work to get there. For me to take a day game seriously, he has to have at least 30 day game lays from different parts of the world. You know, someone with 30 day game lays in Colombia or Southeast Asia doesn't really count, yeah? And he has to be at least 30 years old. Actually, the best place to meet wings is out on the streets. If you start chatting with someone day gaming, you know, walk around with them a little bit. If you see that the, all they do is talk and they're not approaching and they're taking 30 minutes between their approaches, well, you know, you had a chat with them once, maybe don't see them again, but if you're meeting someone who's very dedicated, going out and being a cool guy, well, why not connect with him and go out with him again? Remember that these type, types of people, they aren't spending their time in a YouTube comment section or posting about day game on X for the most part, with, exception, with exceptions, of course. And if you are a dedicated day gamer who's putting in time and effort, you can also apply to join our private community and online coaching program. There you'll meet some of the best day gamers I know, the dudes I hang out with and chat with, and a bunch of other dedicated day gamers. Plus, we're doing monthly coaching calls, in-depth content, uh, infields, and a lot of other cool stuff. So now you know, day game hasn't really gotten harder. It just stopped working for guys who had to rely on being a shiny thing. If you're actually a good day gamer and you know how to talk with women and you're bringing some value to the table, it's still as effective as it has always been. You simply have to learn how to do that. And well, if you want me to help you to do that, then come on a day game trip with me where we'll be hitting the streets for a week where I'll be teaching you everything you need to know. You'll find all the details about infield coaching and also our private community by clicking the links in description. Well, that's it for this time. See you next week. Ciao, guys.